state of California. I don't think I need to remind any of you that in 2004, the State Controller's Office initiated a 21st century project. It was an information technology effort to re replace our uh, HR and payroll system here in the state. Uh, about 260,000 uh, state employees were involved in terms of potentially having their pay and HR systems modified. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that was in 2004, and in February of 2013, after the project experienced uh, various problems, uh, as, uh, as I recall, there was a change in some contractor, one or more contractors, but in 2013, the controller's office terminated that procurement uh, effort with the vendor, and the project was suspended. Uh, if this were the only... Uh, <clears throat> IT project that had difficulty in the state of California, we probably would not be here and we would probably not be conducting an oversight hearing. Unfortunately, we've not had a great track record uh, in the state of California with respect to information technology projects. In August of last year, some of you may have attended, we conducted um, our first oversight hearing on this subject uh, to try to determine what the lessons learned were associated with the controller's project with, uh, I would say, limited success. Uh, since that time, actually at or about the time that we started the hearing, uh, I received a copy of um, the governor and the controller's task force report on recommendations to improve large information technology procurements, a roadmap for success in California. Uh, after three hours, we concluded uh, our hearing in August and did not have the time to uh, take testimony regarding that report, uh, so we intend to do so today. Uh, since that hearing also, the uh, Legislative Analyst's Office uh, issued a report dated March 19, 2014, entitled the 2014-15 Budget 21st Century Project Update. I realize this is a difficult project. There are various legal issues involved, but it is absolutely critical in my view that we attempt to identify lessons learned and we identify a way ahead for information technology projects in the future in the state of California. It's too important an issue and the consequences of failure are too dramatic, both in terms of dollars uh, and in terms of time and impact on people, as we saw with the Controller's Office project. So this hearing is a start. Today we will hear from representatives from the Legislative Analyst's Office, hopefully with respect to their project update uh, report uh, dated March of 2014. We will hear from the California Task Force on Reengineering IT Procurement. The Controller's Office uh, representatives are here as well. Uh, as is a representative from the Department of Technology. So having said all that, perhaps I could ask the legislative analyst representatives to join us and make a presentation on their project update. Good afternoon, um, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm Lourdes Morales with the Legislative Analyst Office. Um, thank you for the opportunity to present before the committee um, this afternoon. As you noted, um, last month our office did release an analysis on the 21st Century Project. As you summarized quite well in your opening remarks, there have been a number of challenges um, with the project that ultimately led to its suspension. Um, we have noted since the suspension of the project that an assessment um, is a critical step um, for the for meeting the state's unmet need for a modernized payroll system. Um, we think that an independent assessment would allow the state to identify what were the challenges and most importantly allow the state to, to learn from those challenges in the benefit of the 21st century project, but in addition to the benefit of the state's um, very significant IT portfolio. Um, I'd like to um, turn your attention to the overview um, handout that I believe you have in front of you. 
um, this document is prepared just to give you some broader context about this um, issue of procurement and implementation of IT throughout the state. Um, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to begin with page one, where I give you a sense of the state's investment in information technology at a very high level. Um, in fiscal year 2012-13, the state invested $2.2 billion in information technology. This includes telecommunications, IT goods and services, as well as um, investment in the state data center and in the development and maintenance of state IT system. Um, a significant portion of this investment in IT is concentrated um, within the health and human services area. Um, you'll note from the table on page one, um, nearly 30% of the state's investment has been in this budget area. Um, moving on to page two, um, as, as I alluded to, the state has a significant IT portfolio. There's currently over 35 IT por um, projects and at various stages of development. So these are projects that have submitted feasibility study reports to the Department of Technology and have been approved to begin. The total cost of completing these projects over several fiscal years is estimated to be nearly $4 billion. Um, I briefly um, include a description of the five most costly IT projects for the state, um, and I'll just note that the, completion, the, the total estimated cost to complete each of these projects is upwards of $400 million. Um, now that you have a sense of just the magnitude of the state's um, IT investment, I'd like to briefly turn to the challenges of implementing these projects. Um, if you turn to page three, there's a chart on global trends in IT project failure rates. Um, although this is a global representation, the survey represented in, in this chart is largely skewed towards U.S. Um, companies and government agencies. As you'll note, the trend has been largely consistent over time. Um, in 2012 in particular, nearly 40 projects were completed successfully. These are projects that were delivered on time, on budget, and included all required features. However, um, about 60% of projects were either challenged or failed. These are projects that were submitted late, over budget, or ultimately did not include some of the functionality um, required, as well as projects that ultimately w were not completed at all, um, and there was no delivery. Um, with just a sense of the magnitude of the cost and the challenges, I'd like to give you a very brief overview of the state's um, procurement process on page four. Um, commonly, the Department of General Services is um, understood to be the state's entity responsible for procurement, but it is a bit different um, in the area of information technology. Um, in July of 2013, um, procurement authority for technology and telecommunications um, shifted from the Department of General Services to the Department of Technology. The intent really was to leverage Department of Technology's expertise in that area, as well as to further consolidate um, IT functions within a central state entity. Um, there are a number of laws that govern um, procurement in the state. These laws address things like um, requiring that the bids, um, that the procurement be competitive, excuse me, uh, as well as requiring that bids be evaluated on a pre-established um, evaluation criteria and allowing um, bidders to have a means to protest should they have concerns with, um, with the procurement process. Um, the intent of these um, policies and, and laws are really to ensure that the um, process is fair and, and open. Um, I would like to note that instead of having the lowest bid um, approved for IT projects, there is a mechanism to allow for best value to be considered. So this allows for um, the, re the record of a, of a vendor to be evaluated as well as a vendor's experience in that area and kind of an experience with the magnitude of projects that might be, um, might be necessary for a given project. Um, I'd like to turn to page five to give you a sense of some of the common challenges with both procurement and implementation of IT projects at a very high level. In terms of procurement, one of the challenges um, that is commonly identified is simply the length of time to procure projects. Um, this presents a, um, is not only costly, but also presents a disadvantage to small vendors who may have innovative um, ideas for the, for the state, but simply don't have the means to wait a year or two during um, the duration of a procurement um, to, and really need um, capital at a much more um, narrow time period. Another challenge um, in procurement is just having a, a contract that ultimately meets the state needs. This might be because of um, the state may not itself clearly understand the requirements for a project or um, 
challenges in communication between the state and the vendor so that the vendor no, no, um, does not clearly understand the state's needs. Um, another issue that's commonly identified is, is, is this idea that you see the same names on the procurement of projects. You might um, hear in the media that there's a challenge with a project, but you subsequently hear that that same vendor has been awarded a contract for a subsequent project, and there seems to be quite, quite a bit of concern um, for that issue. In terms of project implementation, some of the common challenges you'll see um, across projects is the issue of high vacancy as well as um, turnover, turnover rates at projects. This disrupts the continuity of projects and really limits the number, um, the, the amount of knowledge base that a project can hold on to. Another issue um, that's, that's related to procurement is this, the complex and often misunderstood nature of state, re state um, system requirements. Um, the state's IT demands are extremely complex and really um, fleshing out the state's requirements is, is extremely difficult and can sometimes lead to changes down the road once a, develop, a project is in development. Um, similarly, there's sometimes challenges with projects um, in managing a, contra a vendor contract to the terms of the contract and hold holding the vendor accountable um, to that contract. Uh, just a few others that I'll identify briefly are conversion um, and migration of data. So typically for projects, you need to transfer data from a legacy system to a new system for it to function effectively. And that process is extremely technical, and the state has experienced um, quite a bit of, of challenge um, in that process in the past, as well as testing of systems. Um, testing is extremely important before the deployment of a system to ensure that all the, the defects have been resolved um, to the best extent possible. Um, and one of the things you might see if a project is already tracking behind schedule is testing being uh, abbreviated in order to make the, the established go live date. And finally, um, change management is, is a critical area for projects. This is really the issue of, of culture and having um, an assurance that all stakeholders are fully engaged with the mission of the project. Um, state employees are often very familiar with the way a system works and are comfortable with its operation. And having them the, get going through the process of learning a new system can be very challenging. Um, and, and finally, on page six, as I, I won't um, speak to, to, um, too long on this issue, but as you mentioned, 21st century is really what brought us um, to this hearing today. There was a number of challenges that I know this committee is well aware of, and as I mentioned in my opening remarks as well, um, although there seems to be some very preliminary understandings of, of what, um, what happened with this project, we really, we, the LAO feels that an independent assessment will help us more clearly understand what those challenges are and allow the state to um, be better prepared for success in the future. Thank you. Well, with respect to with respect to these challenge projects that we've had in California, and certainly 21st century isn't the first, although when you're talking a couple hundred million dollars, it's certainly a significant one. Have you, has the LAO's office seen any uh, what I would call after action reports or lessons learned reports from these various uh, projects? So for department, um, projects that are under the purview of the Department of Technology, there are required post-implementation post evaluation reports. Um, these reports are typically um, submitted to the department anywhere between 6 and 18 months following the project, um, so that the project department has a sense, an, an opportunity to, to fully roll out these systems, test their operation, and then document lessons learned. Um, this is a project, this is, this is a document that is shared with the Legislative Analyst Office. And w when did this process start? Um, I, I'm not sure how, when that process was established, but, I, but it is a long-standing practice. And do you regularly see lessons learned flagged in these reports? Um, there are some um, lessons learned identified for in a number of, of areas, but the specifics of these documents really vary based on um, what, what department is, is developing that report. Now, in the March 2013, 2014 uh, LAO 21st Century Project Update, you have some, the, your office anyway, has some very detailed recommendations with respect to the uh, assessment. Yes. Um, we have a number of recommendations um, about the specific components that we believe should be included in that assessment. Um, would you like me to briefly summarize those components? Well, or I can go through them with you, and maybe that might be easier. But uh, initially, you recommend that the Health and Human Services 
agency's Office of Systems Integration be charged with managing this assessment contract? Is there a reason for that? Yes. Um, the Office of Systems Integration, OSI as it's commonly known, um, has established a strong and positive reputation for its management of IT projects within the Health and Human Services area. Um, one of the factors that we've called for in this assessment is for it to be independent, for there to be um, um, strong su support and, re and really faith in the outcomes of, of that um, report. And so we think OSI would be very knowledgeable and independent entity in the v evaluation of the 21st century project. Now you also recommend um, in some detail that the uh, report, the assessment include um, lessons learned. Can you be more specific in that, in, in, on that issue? Sure. Um, some of the issues that might be considered um, are an evaluation of how the project was managed. Um, there's best practices in IT on how the schedule is managed, how risks are identified and tracked, as well as mitigated. So we want to make sure that the management of the project was um, meeting those best practices. Um, that's one of the areas where we also noted that um, relying on the experience of state employees that were engaged in that project is very Im important. Um, one of the risks with the delay of an assessment is that folks transition off the project and memories perhaps fade. Um, and so lessons learned is one area where it's highly dependent on the knowledge of state staff and them being able to um, explain their experience during that process as opposed to an evaluation of the technical software which may be less reliant on um, the experience of state staff and their recollection. And I guess that point go, goes to the timeliness of the lessons learned assessment. That's right. In other words, closer to the event as opposed to six years later. Yes. You also mentioned as an issue that you uh, suggest be covered in this assessment the viability of SAP software and the work completed by SAP. What specifically was, the, uh, was your office uh, pointing to on that uh, issue? Um, as you mentioned in your opening remarks, this project began quite some time ago, and, and the technology that it's based on is at this point um, about ten, 10 years old, if not more. And so the, with the rapid advent of technology, we question whether this is um, the best solution to use moving forward. And so we, want, we would recommend an assessment of that technology and evaluation of other technology options in, in the market to determine um, which approach best meets the state's demand going forward. Now there was some suggestion during the, and certainly some reference during the August of 2013 hearing of the complexity of the project. Yes. And you as the LAO, your office had a suggestion or made some points with respect to simplification in your recommendations as to the assessment. Can you be more specific on that issue? Yes. Um, the 21st Century Project is based on a software that's currently in, in existence and is largely used in the private sector. For that reason, um, let me back up for a second. The, the payroll practices in the state of California are quite different than payroll practices in the private sector. Um, as a result, since the IT software is based on primarily on private sector payroll practices, there's a large amount of customizations and, and modifications to the system that are required in order for the software to meet the state's needs. And our recommendation is um, where you can modify state payroll practices to, mo to more narrowly align with the system, there would be a decrease in the number of customizations and a reduce, um, reducement to the risk of the project. And so we recommend that there be an evaluation of the state's payroll practices to try to limit some of those modifications that might be necessary. Which goes to where the, whether the agency leans on the, the, the functionality of a known legacy system or moves to try to modify practices to fit the software and the design that's available in the marketplace. Yes. And you believe this, this should be addressed in the assessment as well? Yes. And there was also a reference in your report to evaluating options with respect to the updating of the payroll system. What, 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 did that, what does that point to? Um, the 21st Century Project intended to fully integrate the state's payroll practice. Um, a project of that scope is, is very risky. And so we recommend evaluating a number of alternatives. Um, one of the alternatives is to 
divide the project into a, a, a more piecemeal approach that limits the, the scope of the project. So for example, the project being broken up into much smaller pieces. Um, one piece of the project might look at timekeeping functionality and deploying um, a system that addresses that need for the state would be a much smaller in scope and therefore should there be any negative consequences, um, the risk would be um, more narrowly contained. Um, through that approach, you would have a series of projects that ultimately address the state's needs um, for a, a complete and fully modernized system. Um, there are a number of other approaches um, that we recommend as, as well. In other words, <coughs> small project, small failure. That's right. Assuming a failure. We don't yes. work like this is California. <laughs> there was also a reference to updating existing legacy system using a decentralized model. Maybe you already touched on that, but if not, if you could explain what that reference, what that reference is. Uh, Yes, um, state payroll practices, although across the board very complex in the state, are, are even more complex in certain departments. Um, one of the ones I'll bring to your attention is the Department of Forestry as well as the Department of Corrections. Um, the, the nature of their staffing enhances the complexity to pay these individuals. And so one of the recommendations that we make is an evaluation of perhaps dividing the payroll system so that there's systems that meet um, the needs of these particularly complex departments and whereas other systems meet the needs of other departments that are perhaps less complex. In other words, some of the legacy systems you might leave in place and other systems you might replace with a new system? Um, yes, but the, de the determination on when and how those modernizations would happen would be based on the needs of specific departments or perhaps the needs of specific bargaining units. And then there's a section in your recommendation with respect to the assessment suggesting that the assessor take a look at to two things, completing the project using existing SAP software or restarting the project but using a new software solution. Yes, um, that relates to an issue I made, uh, a comment I made previously that the technology is at this point um, quite quite aged um, and so the, the question remains on whether that's still the best solution to meet the state's needs and so an evaluation of the the, um, the value of that software moving forward would help inform the decision on whether we should rely on on SAP software moving forward or perhaps another solution. Since you since the LAO issued this March 2014 mm -hmm. report have you had any contact uh, from the state controller's office um, uh, with respect to uh, this assessment, this independent assessment, or any effort on the controller's part to do a lessons learned assessment internally? Um, I have not spoken to the project. Um, we, we have had numerous conversations in the past about an assessment and our understanding um, from the discussion both in the hearing in this committee as well as your counterpart in, in the assembly was that there is an evaluation on the, the scope of an assessment. We have not seen a draft of that. Is it your understanding that an assessment is ongoing or, or that it has, has been completed? Um, no, my understanding is that there is no assessment um, in, at this point. That, there is, that the controller is not engaged in any internal assessment uh, with respect to lessons learned or any of the points you made earlier? Um, that is not my understanding. Okay. In your uh, March <coughs> 2014 project update, you also recommend an assessment be conducted by the Department of Technology. That's right. Uh, referencing the fact that <clears throat> the um, Department of Technology essentially uh, was tasked with managing this 21st century project and making sure that it uh, was successful. Th Could you right. be more s specific with respect to your recommendation about a self-assessment by the Department of Technology? Um, yes, the Department of Technology is charged with providing oversight and supporting projects as they develop these IT systems. Um, and we think it's important that we evaluate th their role in the 21st century project in order to help them um, be more successful moving forward. Some of the compo specific components of this self-assessment would be an evaluation of their current oversight practices, as well as how these practices were applied to the 21st century project. Um, we also think it's important to note um, that, the 20 that the Department of Technology include um, an evaluation of impediments it might have um, in its oversight capacity. Um, we think it's, it's important to note, um, to be aware of any challenges they might have so that they are better resourced um, moving forward. 
Have you had any response from the Department of Technology following the issuance of your March 2014 uh, project update regarding the suggestion that the department conduct an assessment of its uh, if, of its efforts with respect to the 21st century project? Um, no, we have not, not for the specific recommendation. To your knowledge, has there been any exchange of information between the State Controller's Office and any of the other departments or agencies engaged in information technology procurement um, since the termination of the 21st Century Project in February 20, 2013 with regard to lessons learned? Not to my knowledge. Senator Berryhill, any questions? Yeah, I do. Um, sorry, I just got back. but. Uh, What's, what's stopping the controller's office right now from doing a self-assessment? I mean, I know they have it to date, but uh, wouldn't that be good policy? Um, we think an assess independent assessment is very important moving forward. Um, one of the comments we've heard from the administration on this issue is a concern regarding the state's legal standing given the ongoing lawsuit. That, you know, that, that's, that's hiding behind the lawsuit, which I think has been a big problem in, the, in this whole SAP deal that we've done. And I mean, SAP would love to come up here and testify. They can't. So now the, uh, the, assess or the controller's office doesn't come up here because they say they can't. Nobody is willing to sit down and work together here. And, you know, uh, I think that that's vital that we that we do those types of things. But uh, for the controller's office not to sit back and and uh, and do a self assessment seems crazy to me. What say you? Um, we've called for an independent assessment since the suspension of the project. And again, we, we think that is extremely important, um, not only for the success of the 21st century project moving forward, but again, given the the large portfolio of other IT projects that are ongoing. And they, but they haven't responded to you. Um, th there is no assessment in place at this point. All right, thank you. Ma'am, absent such an assessment, a detailed assessment of lessons learned, an assessment that uh, specifically identifies uh, statutory or administrative impediments that <coughs> cause these sorts of information technology product uh, project failures, is the legislative and analyst's office able to suggest any specific statutory or administrative reform to the legislature? Um, not at this point. Okay. Any further questions, Senator Berrio? And thank you both very, very much for participating today. Yes, sir. Appreciate your efforts. Next, we're privileged, I believe, to have with us a representative of the California Task Force on Reengineering IT Procurement for Success. You have two of us. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're doubly privileged. <laughs> Ma'am, if you would identify yourself. Uh, my name is Rocio Alvarez. Doctor, thank you for joining us. Sir? And my name is Dugan Petty. Dugan Petty. Mr. Petty, thank you for joining us. Thank you for presenting the task force report. Thank you. Um, I have a statement I'd like to read to open, it up, open up the discussion. Perfect. Uh, good afternoon, Chairman Roth and uh, Senator uh, Berryhill. Uh, I'm Rocio Alvarez. I'm the chair of the Task Force on Reengineering IT uh, Procurement, and I'm joined here by Dugan Petty. Uh, he's also one of the task force members. Thank you for inviting us to discuss the work of the task force. Uh, discussion about this topic is always timely in this highly connected world that we live in. But here, we're just 10 days past the closure of the first enrollment period for the Affordable Care Act, and thus at the end of the chapter of perhaps the most infamous troubled procurement in U.S. history, it's especially useful. It's especially a useful time to reflect on the complexities of projects such as these. These are software projects that hold promise of uh, providing citizens with better ways to interact with government, all with the same intuitiveness one expects from an iTunes downloaded app, and they rarely cost 99 cents. Uh, yet at the same time, if they fail, these projects can undermine public trust and confidence. Uh, the task force was charged precisely for this reason to help the state of California identify policies and practices that would help position it to successfully procure, develop, and maintain software that will provide services to its citizens effectively and efficiently. Um, it's, important, it's important to note that it was neither the charter nor the goal of this task force to conduct a review of the 21st century project or any other individual project for that matter. 
Our goal was to discern best practices and themes that would have wide applicability to large-scale IT investments made by the state of California. Uh, can somebody grab that? Um, before I, I cover the process and summarize the organizing logic of the task force recommendations, I'd like to recognize the members whose name you see up here on the poster board. Um, these individuals volunteered their time and expertise to share their knowledge to help our state. They made this report what it is and made my job as chair a pleasure and really a privilege. Our task force was made up of members from the state and federal government, from higher education, from private industry and nonprofits with expertise in procurement, in law and contract management, innovation management, and more. Combined, this task force represents about 100 years of collective experience in managing the entire IT life cycle. It was truly an A-team. Uh, the task force would also uh, like to acknowledge the assistance of Jan Ross and her staff from the controller's office in orienting us and providing logistical and analytical support. So we began our work in December 2012, responding to the charge from the governor um, and the controller to help the state identify the three things, three things, how to hire the right vendors, get the best value from these vendors, and hold them accountable. Uh, in the course of our six months of work, we reviewed the best practices literature on IT procurement. We studied previous California reviews of this topic. We spoke with individuals representing every angle of the IT project landscape, uh, from major implementation vendors like CGI, Accenture, IBM, and Microsoft, to the leadership and management teams of uh, the California Technology Agency to representatives from DGS and finance and implementation professionals involved in projects large and small. While the title of the task force focuses on procurement, uh, the task force reviewed the entire life cycle of a large-scale IT project because all members believe that in order to achieve a successful end, initial stages must be managed very carefully. Uh, mistakes made early on can have major damaging impacts throughout the project life cycle. Therefore, our 21 recommendations cover the life cycle of these investments from initial concept and planning to close out and lessons learned. Um, can you just take a poster? Um, and so, as you'll see on, the, on this other poster here, the task force identified major themes that are in the larger font there and challenges that are in the smaller font. Um, that these emerged from our data gathering and deliberations. There were 10 major challenges that the task force felt needed to be addressed in order to improve the chances of success for IT projects. These challenges cl clustered somewhat naturally around seven themes. Some of these themes span the entire IT life cycle, such as governance um, and cultural factors. Others are specific to certain phases, such as procurement. Uh, the 21 recommendations that make up the body of our report are an attempt to comprehensively answer these initial challenges that were identified. These are based on best practices in other states, localities, or industry. Implementation of some of the recommendations require changing management practice, others revising state administrative manuals, and still others changing legislation. Uh, wherever we could, we've identified uh, what types of changes need to, need to take place. Um, while some of these recommendations are new, many build upon improvements already being undertaken by Carlos Ramos um, and his staff at CTA. And finally, these recommendations, some new, some not, together represent one of the most detailed and comprehensive set of recommendations provided to the state of California for improving management of IT investments and projects. Together, they provide a roadmap towards improving the way the state of California engages with technology to serve its citizens. Uh, Dugan and I welcome now the opportunity to further discuss the findings and recommendations with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. And that's exactly what we're here for, is to try to, uh, was not to beat up on the 21st century folks uh, any more than we have, but to, to talk about what, what we can do on a go-forward basis in the state of California to perhaps improve our IT procurement process to the extent it needs improvement, and whether or not it needs improvement, at least try to minimize the kind of situations that we have experienced in the most recent past. Uh, your uh, task force report is excellent, by the way, and Thank you. I have reviewed it. And perhaps we could go through, uh, if you have the time, some of the recommendations, and you could provide some insight to us on some of the comments. Um, in looking at recommendation number one, which has to do with um, modifying the um, feasibility study report um, process, uh, restructuring the project approval process, I know 
challenge, one of the challenges identified was the tendency to design a system based on the functionality of known legacy system, the known legacy system rather than, than modernize. And there was another comment about ill-defined requirements leading to extreme changes. Could you talk to that uh, f for me? 